everyone. Nice to be here with you in person or <laughs> virtually. So this year, um, as has been the case for everyone, for the Assisa Foundation, 2020 was a year of pivoting and trialing new methods. I believe that the Assisa Foundation leads by example and does not go gently into new things ever, but questions each and every option and decision that's presented to them. As an m and &E and implementation team with, our part, with the partners Grounded Media, we question the content, the platforms, the channels, the frequency, the expectations of different target audiences across all of the different programs. And so I'm going to share with you a little bit about what we learned in terms of the implementation of these new digital channels and the pivots that were made. First of all, as it pertains to wage-wise, the, the first six weeks of the program actually was a standard face-to-face -face program, uh, had the USSD auxiliary channel. And in fact, the wage-wise program had anticipated implementing a Facebook and a website, however, a couple of months later than was actually necessary given the, the pandemic. So we were actually moving over already to what is called the blended learning approach. And it was piloted from as soon as the face uh, face to face workshops were eliminated, we were piloting this blended approach. So what this um, really looked like was a combination of online workshops with on ongoing content that used different platforms, including radio, USSD, WhatsApp, Facebook, and the website. And what we saw was that there was a huge uptake on the virtual channels. Specifically, we saw great uptake on the WhatsApp platform. So 66% of the participants were, were active, which is a great rating. Um, there was 26% without WhatsApp, and only 7.5% of participants actually actively exited the program. This really showed to us that this was a, a really relevant and appropriate channel for South Africa in particular. Secondly, when the, way, when the website was launched, we saw 100 people visiting um, the website a week over the period of time with almost 1,100 new users. There was a minute and 39 seconds on average spent on the, on the website, which is actually quite high. And actually what's interesting is that over half of the users were youth. So that gives us a really good sense of who can be targeted by the different channels. To, to sum up across the different programs, WageWise, L plus Earn, which is a program with young adults, and Build Up, there was a few commonalities that came up. As I mentioned, these are questions that are asked by the ASISA Foundation and on all the steering committees on a regular basis. So in terms of pivoting to new channels and platforms, the very sort of most important question, most important factor to consider is the access and comfort to digital platforms that various different target audience members may have or may not be comfortable with. And all of that will immediately affect any kind of learning and the ultimate impact that is desirable. So for instance, USSD has had great engagement from the wage-wise participants, however quite poor engagement from students. And so we learn about which channels we can actually use with the different target audiences. Zoom is a super platform for varsity students. However, it didn't work as well with TVET students and not as well with the housing cooperative members. And so the implementation team has to consider how to use which platform for which audience or what factors need to be included to make the platforms more accessible. When moving off of out of face-to-face -face workshops, People, it, it becomes even more obvious how people use their time and that people's time is very precious. Not all content is as relevant to all groups. And we need to really think about the needs and interests of each of the different groups, so the different target audiences within ASISA Foundation's portfolio of interest, portfolio of, 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 of the population, in ensuring relevance across those different groups. We've known for many years that action to be that for action to become habitual and achieve the entrenched behavior change over a period of time, 
we we know that we need to have further engagement and reinforcing of messages beyond a single once off off session learning session the wonderful thing with digital channels is that digital channels really facilitate this type of longer term relationship because it's quite easy to stay in touch with people when you haven't necessarily been able to when you only see people face to face in sum in 2020 we recognize that transitioning to a digital offering was necessary and it is beneficial to improving the program reach ensuring quality engagement or enhancing quality engagement and very much enabling flexibility however it hasn't quite negated some of the concerns over access as a result of the digital divide that we face in south africa and also the other aspect is that as humans we all appreciate in-person connections, and these cannot be fully ignored through digital platforms and online learning. What we did at a, at a broader scale perspective was that we actually had the opportunity to undertake a longer term, longitudinal impact survey, looking at financial resilience during COVID-19. And what we did is we actually went back to a group of wage-wise participants from 2017 to understand whether there was a difference between those participants that had had the benefit of being part of WageWise a few years ago versus a very similar cohort of South Africans that had matched uh, factors and characteristics, but had not been WageWise participants. So we really were aiming to understand how financial education is supporting individuals to cope with financial shock. We interviewed 300 participants. As I said, 149 participants had attended and participated in WageWise training in 2017. And we identified 151 other South Africans that looked that were very similar to those that 149 participants. All of the interviews were conducted telephonically. They were they were human to human. So there was an individual that was actually conducting the interview on the other end of the phone and an incentive was provided to encourage participation. Overall, what we found was that financial education supports financial resilience. Those participants who had attended financial education ultimately felt more calm about their debt and their level of savings. Further, financial education had helped respondents, participants, to make changes prior to COVID-19, which had been useful to help them manage their finances and their financial resilience during, during COVID-19. So examples such as starting to save, implementing budgeting tools, and also the prioritization of spending on essential items. Respondents did uh, noted that they found information on how to better manage their resources from a number of sources. So we recognize that the Assisa Foundation is not the sole source of this information and people would go to their bank, their friends and family, social media, which is great because we're now putting more and more content onto social media, radio, TV, as well as the Assisa and the WageWise resources that are available on the internet, as well as handed out in past workshops. We heard from the, from the survey respondents that those who had attended WageWise in the past and had been provided with the take home material, they did follow up and use the WageWise resources. And in particular, they noted the budgeting template that details, the diff, details how to manage income and expenses. The last um, point to note before I move on to the details specifically is that more than half of the respondents amongst both groups indicated that they, they will be able to cope with the effect of the pandemic, um, noting this was done in July and, and we're now been eight months beyond that. It was, it's important to note that the participants that, that were wage-wise past participants appear to have responded more positively and more frequently that they will be able to cope. So that really reinforces this notion that financial education does lead to increased financial resilience. Just a few, a few of the, the, the details on, on what this means and what this looks like from a savings and a debt perspective. 
specifically on savings. Um, those who had participated in WageWise were more likely to be saving, but still not saving enough, which is a, a message that we hear consistently across all our programs, but we were we were pleased to hear that they were more like wage wise participants were more likely to be savings. Um, secondly, which we thought was really interesting is that those that keep track of their savings are more comfortable with their level of savings. So that is essentially that those that know what they do with their funds are more comfortable with their current circumstances. Um, and lastly, those who saved for emergencies and took heed of the messaging that had been shared during WageWise are more comfortable with their level of savings and particularly as it pertains to COVID-19. In terms of the debts, the circumstances surrounding debt, what we noted was twice as many respondents from the WageWise cohort either had no debt or felt calm about their debt levels compared to those in the comparison group. One of the reasons we went all the way back to 2017 cohort is exactly this, is that we wanted to see if people had enough elapsed time between receiving the content and being able to implement changes, were there actually changes made a couple of years um, by the time they got to a circumstance that required this really deep financial resilience. And what we saw is that that is in fact true. Those who keep track of their expenses are more likely to feel calm about their debt and did not have debt. So this is a similar statement around those that know how much they are saving and keep track of their savings. And then lastly, um, we there was a significant portion of the population group that were in the public sector. And those that are in the public sector are more likely to feel calm about their debt than those that are um, in the private sector could have been either uh, employed by a, a, a business or running their, a business themselves. And we think that this is the interpretation of this is that they are um, more likely to either have, um, they'll, they'll have consistent salaries and also that the public sector was not seeing specifically any direct cuts in the immediate term at the point of the survey. So all in all, we feel that um, this survey that happened during the point of a, a financial crisis in many people's lives, that the financial education really did uh, come to the fore and past wage-wise participants, as well as other financial education uh, participants, whatever program that might be, um, were definitely uh, stood in a better condition than, than others. So we're thrilled to have seen these, these results.